Sarah, I like your question. Made me think a lot this week. Not sure I even have a great answer, but you wrote, what are two metrics that you look at, David, you look at first when assessing a company's financials? Two metrics. So, yes, I did think about this one. I, I, I slightly reframed the question, but I hope this is still helpful, Sarah. I think the way that I phrase it in my mind is, pretend that I could only know two data points two numbers for any stock, and then I had to make a decision about whether I wanted to continue researching that company, maybe to buy it, or just kick it away. What would those two bits of data be? And I I think I've settled on this. The first number that I'd like to know is the cash flow of the company. So, I'd like to know, if I'm allowed to know what next year's projection would be, or if you would sneakily tell me what the next five years of cash flow would be, I would take that number. Or we could just look backwards one year, as the financial statements do, and show where cash flow, what cash flow has been. That's number one. I'd like to know, you know, is this company pulling in $10 million of cash flow this year? Or are we flat? Or is the company losing $100 million of cash flow each year? So, knowing where the cash is moving. And then the second number would be the amount of cash on the balance sheet. So, to give a couple quick examples, let's take the example of a development stage biotech company. So, this is a company that's going to have negative cash flow. Let's pretend that it lost $35 million in cash flow, negative cash flow last year, presumably because it doesn't have a product in the market yet. It's trying to get FDA clearance and it's spending a lot on scientists and labs in order to find a good solution. So, that's a typical situation. So, minus $35 million sounds bad, but if I then find out that on the balance sheet in the company's checking account, if you will, it has $350 million, then I can project that forward and say, okay, so these guys are going to be around a while. Minus 35 might sound bad, but we have 350 uh, sitting there on the balance sheet, uh, and I feel just fine about that. On the other hand, if we have a company that is generating um, just $2 million of cash flow, example number two, and on their balance sheet, they have $8 million of cash overall, uh, then I start worrying a little bit because my first example was a company with negative cash flow, which sounds bad, but they had a lot on their balance sheet. This is a company with small positive cash flow, but one without that much cash. Now, there's no way I would ever allow myself to only have two financial metrics. And really, the third that really makes this have a little bit more structural integrity is knowing the amount of debt that a company has. So, in both of those examples I just gave, the amount of debt a company might have or not would affect this. But if you boil down business just to the generation of cash, uh, is it plus or minus right now, and how much do we have in the bank, I think you largely have a pretty good, quick financial framework to know what kinds of companies and stocks you might want to pick and what you're looking for. Thanks for your question. As always, people on this program may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal recommendations for or against. So, don't buy or sell stocks based solely on what you hear. Learn more about Rule Breaker Investing at rbi.fool.com.